Hey guys, Georgia Soundtracks here. And this week, we just got done installing this TSU 8 function PNP decoder into this Kato 944 CW. So, for an installation video, be sure to check out the link in the description below. Now, what we're going to do first is we're going to set up our dynamic digital exhaust. Now, this is one of the coolest features of the Tsunami 2. Now, to do this, there is a small calibration process. And what we're going to do is we're going to estimate the amount of power that the motor uses throughout the speed range. And then the decoder is basically going to use that as a baseline reference and says, okay, at speed step 10, the motor uses this many uh, milliamps or this many amps or whatever it is. And once we get that power figured out, if the decoder needs to send more power to the motor to maintain speed, the dynamic exhaust processor will then use that as a reference. And if we need to go above, it will increase our diesel engine RPM. If we're coasting to a stop and we don't need quite as much, the DDE processor will then reduce. Now, one thing I want to point out is this is just a sound modification. This has absolutely nothing to do with the speed. So what you want to do is if you're going to do any speed matching or setting up of custom tables, limiting top speeds, anything like that, I recommend you do that first before we calibrate the dynamic exhaust. Now, before we get into this, there's one other little topic that we need to discuss. First of which, this is called indexed CVs. Now, indexed CVs are a way that the NMRA has allowed us to access more CVs than 512. And so this way it can be backwards compatible with most DCC systems. So for more information on this, be sure to check out the other video in our link in the description below, where it will show you our explanation on what an index CV is, how it works, and why we use it. Now for this demonstration, we're gonna use CV 2.503, 2.504, and then to set the sensitivity, we're gonna set 2.512. Now first off, 2.503, what that's going to do is that's going to set the base amount of power that the motor is going to use at speed step 1. So to do this, we're going to get our model moving at speed step 1 of 128. Now we're going to go ahead and set some programming CVs on the main line. So we're going to program CV32 to a value of 2. And then now while the locomotive is moving on flat level track, at this speed what we're going to do is we're going to program CV503 to a value of 255. Now we can exit out and bring our locomotive to a stop. Now the decoder internally has calibrated and interrogated that motor to determine the power consumption and plotted a point in the chart. Now the next step in this is we're going to set CV 2.504 while the locomotive is moving. Now you're going to want to do this somewhere around speed step 20 or 30, somewhere around your normal operating speed. And again, this is going to plot a second point on the graph. So it's, we're going to do this one at speed step 20. So then it's going to internally calibrate the power consumption of the motor. And as you can see in this chart, you're going to see that it's going to draw a line and basically say this is the estimated power consumption of this motor. So to do this, we're going to go ahead and hold the locomotive still with our hand. We're going to crank up to speed step 20. Now remember, there's no momentum set yet, so we're going to instantly jump to speed step 20. Now, with my throttle, I'm going to program on the main line, CV504. Now I'm gonna enter a value of 255, but before I actually hit send, I'm gonna to need to release this model so that the motor is not fighting against my hand. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna let it settle into speed for a second. We're gonna hit enter. We're gonna exit out, and then we can stop and grab our locomotive and bring it to a stop. And in that short period of time, the decoder has calibrated to create our second point on the graph. Now the third section we're going to do is CV2.512 and this determines the sensitivity that the decoder is going to have to changes in the load. Now when you're doing a diesel locomotive, I actually recommend using a fairly low value. And the reason for this is when you have multiple locomotives running together, if you experience a small little coupler bump as the locomotives are running, 
If you have a really high sensitivity, the lead locomotive may start notching up and the trailing would lot notch down or vice versa. So you really want to try to settle this in. Now I will tell you from experience, this is going to be a trial and error. So try a value, let it run for a little bit, see how you like it. You can always go back and reset it. So in this case, I'm going to use a value of 20. So we're going to go ahead and set CB512 to a value of 20. Now, when I start moving my locomotive, we're going to go at speed step two. You can hear the locomotive notch up and then it's going to come back down as it settles into speed. Now we're going to simulate a load by putting my finger on the locomotive. And now you can hear the throttle notching up as it's working hard against my hand. And then when we release, you'll hear that prime mover crest and then start working its way back down to match the work that the locomotive is actually doing. And that's how dynamic exhaust works. Now, for more detailed information, please visit our website at Soundtracks.com and be sure to check out the user's guide for all the cool things that we've built into the Tsunami 2. Also, we want to thank you for voting us a Model Railroader's Reader's Choice Award winner for Favorite Sound Decoder two years in a row. So we want to express thank you, and for those of you who haven't tried this out yet, be sure to get one of them from your retailer today, and you can try this out, and you can have this feature. One of the best parts, this works automatically once it's calibrated. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you next week.